In this video, I'm going to show you my process behind creating this image, as well as sharing with you the project file and a free alternative. We will use the liquify tool to distort our text in a non-destructive way and achieve the look we are after, before getting briefly into blending the different aspects of the image together using simple tricks that take no time at all. Start by making a new document. I use 2560 by 2560 resolution 300, uh, color, bit, color mode 16 bit, and for the background color you can use whatever you want because you can always change it later. First things first, add your text and choose a color. You can change the font and text later, but it's better to have in mind the result you want, as changing it later on will result in more work. Before you move on, make sure to convert your text to a smart object. This will allow you to make changes to your text later on in a non-destructive way. Now to start blurring the text. We're going to use a couple of different blurs. The first being motion blur. I set the direction to 90 and the distance to 60. The next blur is going to be Gaussian blur. We just need a little bit, so just add as much as you think you'd need. Once your text is blurred, we can start using the liquify tool. You can use the brush to manipulate and distort your text. There are plenty of brush options and parameters to play around with and achieve different effects, but my aim while working on this particular project was to create a smoky fire. I focus on stretching out the blurred bits of text and extending them up higher to create smoke. After a bit of brushwork, take the text object and duplicate it twice. Select the bottom text object and add a good bit of Gaussian blur. The purpose of this is to soften the edges of our text. Now select your top text and add a gradient overlay in the color of your choice. For the gradient, I'm going to start with one of the presets and then I'm going to tune it to my liking. After the gradient, add a satin as well. And finally, I'm going to add some outer glow. Before continuing, I'm just going to clean up a bit, then convert all of my text copies into another smart object. This will be the easiest way to proceed, as more changes will need to be made to all three of these text, ob text objects and now and later on. Once the new smart object is made, I'm now going to stretch the text out some more, as I feel it could be longer. Following this, I use perspective warp as well to help with the change of its shape. To help with distorting the text, I go to Filter, Distort, Wave, and have a play with the parameters to add a mild ripple. To further push the wave effect, I use a liquify once again. I like how this looks so far, but I think it needs to be feathered towards the top of the flame. To do this, I'll add a vector mask and do it by hand. Click this button here with the text layer selected to create the vector mask. Select the white thumbnail and then select the brush tool. You're going to use a soft brush to paint over the spots you want to feather out. General rule of thumb, use the color black to erase and the color white to fill it back in. This will keep it non-destructive. The next thing I want to do is add some glow to the whole thing. The easiest way to do this will be to duplicate it then add linear dodge. If it's too intense, you can lower the opacity after. I'm happy so far with this, so now I'm going to move on to adding texture to the image. You can use whatever texture you want, but I'm going to use this printer ink texture. You can find this one and others with a quick google search. The blend mode divided worked well for this situation, but if you find you get a funny looking result, some, try some different blend modes. 
If you want a video where I explain all the different blend modes and how to use them, let me know. Once I finish placing my texture, I need to color correct it, as it is far more warm than the rest of the image. So I'll put a hue and saturation on, and link it to the printer texture, so only it is affected by the hue and sat layer. At this point in recording the video, I got an idea and started running with it. The shapes you can create are so versatile that they can fit so many different uses and applications. I started thinking of a candlelit scene with the dark background and the candlelit foreground and got straight to work on quickly compositing the candle part. Once the candle was in place, I used the liquify tool again to bend the text toward the wick of the candle. After adding a flame to mix with the text, I went through and blended everything together as best I could. To generalize what I'm doing while blending is making sure the colors match as best they can, as well as shadows and highlights being consistent, or as, as close, you know, as close as they can. Lastly, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, tips, and project files like this one, which you can get at the link in the description.